is memory. So when we have traumatic memories that we weren't able to fully express our emotions, that emotion gets suppressed into the subconscious mind and then it will later come out in the dreams trying to like be integrated so it can move on. And the reason why you may not have a a second dream of like being with like the love of your life or your favorite celebrity in a lucid dream, right? You may have only had that one time. It's because you fully integrated that emotion in the moment. You were fully present for it. You liked having that experience. So your awareness was there and you fully integrated th those emotions. But when something's uncomfortable um, in our life, like we try not to feel those emotions. We try to avoid it. And so when something's chasing us or running after us in the lucid dream, it's literally a representation of that one thing, that one time or whatever it was that we weren't willing to face and integrate. So this is how deep like nightmares can go and shadow figures and fear in the lucid dream. But as far as protecting yourself from like, <clears throat> like lower energies, I kind of have an interesting perspective on that. I believe that whatever emotional frequency we are operating on, that's what we're going to experience. I feel like if people that are super, super, super depressed have an out-of-body experience, they might experience something lower vibrational because that's where they're operating on. And it's not their fault. So, you know, we, we all go through that stuff, but I feel like our level of awareness and our, our emotional state is what creates the emotional state of the experience. Because lucid dreams and out-of-body experiences and sleep paralysis, because all of that is thought responsive, how we energetically and emotionally feel is going to run the experience. And I believe that you're totally safe. I literally don't believe in like <laughs> like all of these like lower energies that people say can like take over your body and stuff. I I just don't believe in that. And that's my belief. And so I've never experienced it. So everything is actually true, but it's all down to the truth that you invest in. For me, I've really found that the lucid dream state is like a way for me to integrate trauma, to explore my own psyche, to literally manifest and grow and ask questions. And it's a very like incredible state full of wisdom. And so I don't experience anything that would scare me away from that. Because usually if I experience like a nightmare or something, I'm like, ooh, what's the, what's the, what's the dream we're trying to show me? I wonder what this is that needs to be integrated. And so I start to come at it with more of an awareness. Like if you ever get lucid in a nightmare try embracing the nightmare try hugging the nightmare or like saying nice things to it and you'll notice the whole dream change like the dream that i told you about where i i met my nightmare and he's like i don't know it's your dream and he ended up being my childhood trauma we went and got out coffee we got we literally went out to coffee later with this like shadow figure and we just like had our little like cups of coffee and it was great and i remember hugging him at the end of the dream and it turned the whole dream turned white and it just was like this big boom and to me that was my signal that I integrated something really really powerful there so it's all about your perception of how you see this world and it's imagine if we all lived like we were lucid dreaming if you're lucid dreaming you know that everything is an aspect of you and if a dream character came up to you super pissed you wouldn't be like oh my god why did he say why is he acting this way you'd be like hmm I wonder what that represents to me Hmm, like you start to see it from a totally different perspective. So I think that we should start to live like we dream and see everything as a part of us. And everything, you, I truly believe that everything you experience in the out of body state or the lucid dream state is for you. And fear is false evidence appearing real. It is not real. There's no such thing as fear. Fear is like the anticipation of something. But what if you got to actually find out what that night nightmare represented and it changed your entire perception of a certain like thing that you went through when you were like six or seven? Like, what if your nightmares or what you experience can shift your whole perception in different ways? Like, it's so, so beautiful. So if you ever experience anything that makes you uncomfortable, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because I promise you there is something beautiful on the other side of it and it is nothing to run away from like nightmares are the most healing form of dreams because it's your trauma everything coming to the surface on a silver platter for you you don't have to go looking for it you don't have to get out your journal and try to dive deep into your trauma you can literally ask it questions you can ask it anything you can literally make peace with it and embrace the nightmare or hug it in some way so when you see it that way completely changes your perception on those experiences that we can have so yeah, thank you. You've been given really, really good answers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think they're really helpful. Um, yeah. Yeah, you've been um, great. And do you, are you, I'm just conscious of the time. Are you still okay to carry on? 
Yeah, okay. yeah, I have okay. about like 15, 20 minutes if that's okay. Okay, yeah, just, you know, leave whenever you whenever you want. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, there's an experience I'd like to share about what you just said about the nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if it was a dream or something else. I still don't know what happened. But let's just say it was a dream. So I went to bed like yeah, I usually do, and, and then I woke up in the middle of the night, but not in my room. I woke up in this, I'm tempted to say a black void, but there was no color to it, you know, it's just, mm. that's why it's so hard to describe, because I dreamt of nothing with no characters, no smells, no, no nothing, you know, no, mm-hmm. nothing was coming to my senses. And I'm tempted to say black void because usually when we think of nothing, that's what we think about. But that wouldn't be accurate. But anyway, I was in this void, but with full awareness. And uh, I had no memories of who I was. And uh, whatever awareness this was, I couldn't really refer to myself as anything. Mm-hmm. So I was just being aware of the experience. And I had no idea for how long I was there, because for me it feels like felt like that was my only experience I ever had. So it could be eternity or two seconds; it didn't really matter. Um, so I wasn't there, and I think what was traumatizing about it—it's not what I describe, but it's just with it, it came these intense, pure emotions. So I could feel. Fear, sadness, loneliness, and all those types of negative emotion all at once in one tiny point of time. I I could feel all of them, but with no outside circumstance dictating why I feel that way. I I just felt that way. And I had a tiny part of myself that knew somehow that if I wanted to wake up from this current illusion, I could just by saying so. But it kind of made me wonder, what am I going to wake up to? You know, because I had no idea who Alex is, which is my name. I didn't know who that Alex guy was at this moment. I had no memories of my bedrooms or my, my home or how it looks. So a part of me wanted to wake up from this illusion because it was kind of a terrible thing to happen. Also, I, had the, I said that uh, I had no sensation, but... I just remember that I was sort of collapsing in this expanding forever in it, as if I was an elastic or something. So something or maybe myself was like stretching myself over and over really repeated, repeatedly and getting sort of thrown away in every direction. Although there was like no, no direction precisely because I was in a void. And I was trying to sort of understand what I would wake up from. Anyway, so it was kind of terrifying. That's crazy. That You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of um, there's a practice within Tibetan Buddhism called sleep yoga. And it's where we can become conscious during deep sleep. So deep delta wave sleep. And I actually just experienced something similar the other day. Where it's like I literally explain it like the void. Like I was dreaming in the void. It was like I was having a conscious experience of nothing mm. At, like it's it's yeah. very exactly. yeah yeah so it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you're it's making like, something out of nothing exactly and it's like what am i even conscious of if there's nothing there you know and it's like it's and for me it's like just dreaming of like the blackness but it's not black it's just like empty it's like everything it's like mm-hmm. very hard to explain but i know you know what i mean and it yeah. almost seems like that was and that's when our conscious mind is like completely turned off almost because it's mm-hmm. repairing the body. Um, so in Delta Wave, our conscious mind is like turned off almost all the way. So it's almost like you were conscious within the deep sleep, but, but also conscious separated from ego, like our conscious ego mind. Mm-hmm. So it almost seems like you were having some sort of like ego death experience because it's like the brain couldn't even like comprehend itself because like the ego was turned off. And so it's like, I feel like it just sent you into this like crazy experience because you were conscious without your conscious mind, if that makes sense. So that's yeah, really interesting. Without the ego, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But I wonder how, how is that possible to feel fear and emotion if there's no ego? 
Well, I feel like the one, that is a good question, but I feel like the one job that the ego has is to survive. So Mm -hmm. maybe like, and our conscious mind can't fully turn off when we're asleep. You know, it's like mostly off when we're in Delta wave sleep, but maybe that was like your ego, like sensing like the disconnection from you and like the, because like the ego grounds itself into like this physical reality. So maybe you can... Yeah, Yeah. so maybe you became conscious of being conscious of that, and your ego was like, "Wait, what is there to ground me to?" And so it started creating those emotions. You know, that's what I. That's what I. You know what I think now that I'm talking about because I never actually talked about about it to anyone, and now some some stuff are making sense. I feel like that the whole work I'm doing, the meditation, lucid dreams, and all the practice I have, it's like my ego notice what's happening and he's sort of getting scared and maybe that dream he was trying to show me what it would be like to have no ego and try to like scares me from this path. And to be the consciousness yeah. itself mm-hmm. that's what's so cool about it it's like you became yeah. the epitome of awareness but, you know you would think of such experience something blissful and really nice but for me when i experienced it first time it was kind of the opposite i felt uh, I, I didn't want to go back to sleep, although I had to go to work in the morning. And I told myself oh, I should, should go back to sleep. It was only like 3 a.m. or something. But I couldn't. Yeah. I so afraid I f- to go back there. <laughs> I feel like it's because, like, yeah, your perception of identity and your perception of reality, like, totally mm-hmm. was challenged. Because I so eventually that made- woke up and, like, I was like, oh, okay, this is what I was not remembering. And then, you know, all my memories sort of came back to me. And I think I had a sleep paralysis during the same night. Uh, kind of um, mm-hmm. was in my room again. It's more like a false awakening. But I woke up in my room and someone was opening my door and getting in my room. At first, for some reason, without seeing who it was, I just felt like it was my father. Like when I was younger, my father would come in my room and check check on me when I was sleeping. Probably just give me a kiss goodnight or just making sure I'm safe. So it felt like kind of the same thing uh, for the first seconds. And then I realized, wait, I live alone. My father doesn't live here. So who the fuck is in my room? (laughs) I still felt felt the presence there and getting closer. And then, of course, my body was paralyzed. But I was able to move ever so slowly. Like I could move my hand and look at them. And for a moment, I forgot how scared I was, and I was just fascinated by my own hands. It, it, mm-hmm. it looked a, um, you know, when a TV screen is having noise, it's, mm-hmm. it's in my head, my hands, instead of being made of skins and bones, it was just that like static, sort of right? noise, static, but oh. all, no color. And I was just. Wow. Fascinated. And how I could just move these fingers and hands and eventually I just, okay, enough. And I woke up. But the interesting thing uh, after having that dream is I, I went to work and did my day as yeah, I do usually. I think at that time uh, I was still a prison guard. So I, I went to the jail and everything, and when I mean everything, everything, the person, the walls, the floor, the skies, anything I looked at reminded me of that void. Mm. Some, it's like the void was telling me to whoever I was talking to, whether it was an inmate, another prison guard, or, or if I was just looking at a wall, a small brick in the wall, it was like, hello, I see you. And that part was really strange. And I kind of felt really scared for a few days. Like, it was like something is onto me. <laughs> but <laughs> That's... Crap. And so, I don't know. No, that's crazy. And I feel like I I usually experience some sort of like, I don't know if it's like a guide or someone like assisting me when I'm having an out-of-body experience or lucid dream, but um, that will happen to me sometimes like in the out of uh, the like sleep paralysis state, you know, like I'll either feel people around and sometimes that could be just a hallucination of my mind or it could be like actual like entities there. But also if you ever experience that again, I'm like in those kind of states, maybe make like a command for like, cause that's actually, I get like, like whoever it is, I don't know. I get like 
astral homies to like help pull me out of body and it usually I they usually start showing up like right as I get the vibrations and I'm like okay I got it and I just like make a request and like the last time I did this I felt someone grab my ankles and I just got like yanked out I was like bobbing on the ceiling so maybe that's someone that could potentially help you get out of body it's 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 worth it it's worth a shot but as far as that experience I almost feel like you were experiencing what it was like to be conscious without your consciousness without your ego and it was almost like you got to experience not the process of being completely separated from your ego but the process of separating which is why so much resistance came up um which is you know like oh my god what is happening like um and i've had a similar experience but when i was awake and i thought i was dying and it's like i started to like zoom i actually talk about it on my uh, youtube channel i had an out-of-body experience while i was walking on a like in a park at at least that's what I think it was was an out-of-body experience and I've never had one walking before um or even just like up and like conscious but I remember zooming out watching myself walk I'm pretty sure I kept walking I don't think I ever stopped walking at some point but it's like my whole awareness zoomed out I forgot what I was who I was where I was I was just like looking down at like this little dot like walking that's where I was walking and it like zoomed out to the earth and like I remember getting so much anxiety because it wasn't like I was already separated um but it's like there's a little thread of me still holding on trying to comprehend not being able to perceive itself like that's what it felt like that's what your experience reminds me of but I think it's these experiences that open us up to like what more is out there you know and what what am I really so all of these experiences, I think there's medicine in it for us because it's just it's just expanding our perception of what consciousness even is. So even though they can be kind of like low key terrifying sometimes, like I think it's so cool to show us like what naturally happens to the human brain and consciousness when in these, you know, deep states. That's really interesting. Uh, thanks for listening to me. Yeah, thanks for telling me. Okay, we have a question from uh, August. Uh, how do you go about meditating in a dream? Every time I've tried to meditate whilst in a lucid dream, I seem to lose concentration on the environment and it collapses, making me wake up. I usually use a sort of open awareness practice. Uh, and also, why would someone want to meditate in a lucid dream? Great questions. And honestly, a lot of people feel like, oh, well, how, how can I meditate in the lucid dream like and close my eyes? You actually don't need to do that. Meditation is all about awareness. Even if you're meditating in waking life, but you can't con concentrate, you just become aware of the fact that you can't concentrate. And that is meditation because you're just aware of whatever is happening as it is happening. So if you are practicing meditation in the lucid dream, what I'd recommend is just sitting where you are. You'd be stabilizing the lucid dream and this will actually help you like make your experiences more crisp and clear and vivid is by interacting with the environment but you don't want to like just go like run off or like fly in the sky as soon as you get lucid because that could cause the <laughs> the dream to crumble very quickly if it's not stabilized first but for meditating you want to get lucid you want to sit wherever you are you kind of just want to feel things like touch the grass what can you smell what can you hear what can you like what can you see and you want to take in all of this like just like all of this beautiful information of your environment, like all of the sounds you can hear really interact with your senses and that is meditating. And you literally just become conscious of your breath because a lot of people will be like, am I meditating yet? Oh my God, oh shit, I'm thinking about something. Oh, oh, I don't think I'm meditating, right? Right? And we can get distracted. But one little trick to help you to always get back to this conscious awareness in meditation is breath and you might have heard that before concentrate on your breath but that's because we cannot breathe in a past breath and we cannot breathe a future breath we can only breathe in like with the breaths that are happening in this moment this present breath and so when you get back to just breathing you can even say like in out in your mind if you want to when you come back to breathing, you come back to the observer. You are not trying to interact with things. You are not trying to change things. You are becoming 
aware of what is already happening around you. So just by doing that in the lucid dream is meditating, just sitting on the grass, maybe rubbing your hands together, a way to stabilize the environment using your senses. That's the best way to stabilize a lucid dream and get it to last as long as possible is by just interacting with it, but not too crazy, like running around, like flying. You can do that if you want when you have like a fully lucid dream. But if you're trying to meditate or even if you're just trying to stabilize your dream, Take it slow, really tune into your senses. My favorite is feeling the grass because it feels like way more real than any grass has felt in Waking Live. And that doesn't even sound like it makes sense, but it does. It's like when we are in the lucid dream, we are not like confined by our physical senses. Like in Waking Life, when we touch something, our sensitivity of touch is limited to the sensitivity of our fingertips. Like how far we can see is limited to our human vision. So when we have these experiences in the lucid dream, we're experiencing them with our mind. We're feeling things with our mind. We're hearing things with our mind. We're seeing things with our mind. We're tasting things with our mind, which is why they are so much more powerful in the lucid dream than in waking life. So it's all about interacting with your senses and why you may want to <clears throat> have meditations in your lucid dream is because because we're having this experience in the mind, what is done within a lucid dream is seven to nine times more powerful than in the waking state. And I think it was Lama Reshe Yimpeche said, even a few moments of meditation within the lucid dream will cause you to feel like you spent an entire month at a meditation retreat. Like that's how powerful meditation is specifically in the lucid dream. It's like meditating within a meditation. So, and that will really change how you feel in waking life. If you're someone that struggles with <clears throat> anxiety, depression, like, any of these things and like you found meditation to be helpful you could literally meditate in your lucid dream and wake up and feel like you just meditated for like <laughs> so much longer than you actually did like and that's what helped me with becoming like familiar with meditation being able to meditate easier in waking life i just practiced it in the dream and if i'm practicing something in the lucid dream then i'm creating the neural correlates to connect those things in my brain so i'm literally like rewiring my brain to be better at meditating in waking life by practicing meditating in the lucid dream if that makes sense so the point to like maybe why you'd want to meditate in the lucid dream is it helps your dreams stay more clear. It helps you stabilize the lucid dream. It helps neutralize your emotions so you don't wake up from having too strong of an emotion. And it helps you maintain that brainwave state when you wake up. So if you spent your lucid dream practicing mindfulness, you're going to be more mindful when you wake up. You can practice lucid dreaming for kindness and you're going to be able to be more kind and gentle when you wake up. You can practice it for like being bold and like talking on stage in front of like thousands of people and you'll actually gain that skill in waking life. So it's really about that state is just like about really tuning into what you want to fine tune in your waking life or what skills you want to learn. So if you want to learn to be more mindful more calm, collective, and tap into your intuition easier, practicing meditation in the lucid dream will absolutely help you build that skill in waking life. Great, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Mike. Uh, can you give some input on the void you feel before you astral project? I've never been able to astral project, but before, uh, once I got close, I felt a void, as if I don't exist. I don't exist, but I am experiencing time pass in an empty void of nothingness. Mm, love that, because that is something that, like, once you start to induce the vibrational state or, like, practice inducing out-of-body experiences, and you can induce the vibrational state for, like, a lucid dream, too, but um, you start to become familiar of your specific process. So for me, I have like kind of a specific process that I use and you're going to have to play around with this. Like when I first started inducing out of body experiences, it worked better for me to wake up at like four in the morning and do it and wake myself up and then do the technique. Nowadays, it's like, it's easier for me to get a full night's rest and like stay up during the day and then literally just go and like meditate and that's how I induce them. So you're going to have to play around with the best time to induce this because even though you can induce an out-of-body experience outside of REM sleep, I have found it so much easier to do it in 
REM sleep because you can use sleep paralysis as an indicator that you're in the right stage of sleep, if, if that makes sense. So you can induce an OBE in literally any state of consciousness. You can literally like fall asleep on like the chair and literally have an out-of-body experience. But for me, especially when learning, it, is, it has helped me use the vibrational state as an indicator because there's certain steps or symptoms that I experience. So for example, I will get like a whole night's sleep. Maybe I'll wake up like an hour earlier or something. And then I will stay up for like maybe two to three hours. I'll prep myself because I, I, I know I'm, I'm like, okay, in an hour, I'm going to go and, you know, try to induce an out-of-body experience. So let me drink some tea. Let me read about it. Let me just do something calming, you know, so I can like relax easier and I can like prep myself intentionally to have this experience. Um, then I will literally, I lay on my back, first of all. I, you want to set up your room. You want it to, at least for me, this is what I do. I like, I will have the blinds be closed. I will have some sort of sleep mask on. And this helps create more hypnagogic imagery faster. Because if you have so much light coming into your eyelids, I found that it's hard to tell what is like light coming in and what is like hypnagogic imagery. And I want to make the signs as clear as possible for myself. So I eliminate light in my room. I will lay on my back because I do not normally sleep on my back, but I can get really comfortable on my back. So this will help me create a slight sliver of awareness that I can carry in to my technique. If I'm like trying to induce an out-of-body experience on my side, but I always sleep on my side, I'm probably going to fall asleep. So usually I um, lay in a position that my brain doesn't normally associate with like going to sleep. So for me, that's laying on my back. I will take three deep breaths. Like, I literally have a whole process. I have a couple different ones. But I will take three deep breaths. And every breath that I take, I imagine myself relaxing deeper and deeper. You don't want to have any limbs crossing or anything like that. You want to be able to tune out your body. If you've ever had, uh, if you've ever been in, like, a sensory deprivation tank, those float tanks that have, like, 900 pounds of Epsom salt in it, it's the temperature of your skin. So you're, like, floating you don't feel the temperature of the water and you can't see or hear anything. So it like deprives you of your senses is what these float spas do. That's pretty much what you want to mimic when you are inducing the vibrational state and when you are inducing an out-of-body experience. You want your brain to disassociate from your physical body and that's going to help you transfer your consciousness to another point of the room or another target, if that makes sense. And this is just like what I do that works best for me. So I will be laying completely flat, take three deep breaths in. And for me, what really helps me is imagining that I'm floating in space. Because if I start to create a visual of me floating and I can make that more real to my brain than laying in bed, it's going to start perceiving that imagery instead of what's actually happening. So it's all about shifting your focus and getting your brain to focus on what you're imagining and seeing that as more real than what your physical body is actually experiencing. So I'll lay down, I'll imagine that I'm floating, I'm just like in this void, right? Like an imagery is going to come up eventually, but my job is to just stay slightly aware and completely relaxed. I found out that if I'm like trying to induce an out-of-body experience and I'm like, I'm really trying to induce the vibrations, it's almost like that's creating resistance. So what I do is I go to bed and I'm like, you know, I'm just grateful to have this time to like meditate and just like relax. There's nothing I need to do right now. There's nowhere I need to go. I just get to lay here and be here. And I found that that has really changed my ability to induce out-of-body experiences because I'm not setting up this, like, I'm setting up the intention to do it before I get there, but I'm not, like, holding on to the outcome and, like, waiting for it to show up. I'm just like, wow, this is nice to not have anything that I need to do, and I just get to lay in bed right now. It feels so comfortable. It's warm, like, and you just want to start to sink into comfort that you're already feeling. Once you start to really sink into comfort, I again, I'm like imagining myself like just like floating in this infinite space and I start to experience hypnagogic imagery. It'll be like colors flashing or like things swirling or like geometric patterns and I just become aware of them. I don't want to try to change them. I'm just becoming aware of them. At this point, I'm either able to like... Um, one thing that I do is like if you see like the color red or something, you can think of like red triangle or something and you can actually manifest that in your hypnagogic imagery or if you see tons of like just colors you can think like door and you'll see a door like that's what I do to like build my like my ability to like use the hypnagogic state to create stuff I just like see the colors and I just straight start to 
low key like calmly try to create different shapes and stuff once it starts to really deepen. Um, then I go through a few symptoms that I actually associate with like going out of body. Number one, I will feel my body get very, very heavy. And as you guys know, like when you're in sleep paralysis, your, your diaphragm doesn't need to take in as much air. Like, so it slightly collapses. And that's why some people think they're suffocating, but it's just because our diaphragm doesn't need to take in much air. So once I feel my body kind of settle, I'm like, okay, something's happening. And then I feel a wave of cold chills go down my body. And that is because we don't need, um, well, our temperature drops slightly when we are going to sleep, when we are sleeping. And so I'll literally feel this wave of cold chills. And this is like almost my signal. They're like, oh, I'm falling into sleep. Like something's happening. And then I'll start to feel tingling, like um, the bottom of my feet and it will work its way up. And if you kind of, you can kind of like move it up your body. And it's like this energetic thing that you, that you have to do. But mostly during this process, you want to release all resistance, let go to any outcome that you're experiencing completely relax and try to stay as still as you can and just let the hypnagogic imagery form and you really have to like be in a state of like surrendering because anytime I've tried to induce an out-of-body experience and I was holding on too much I just had way too much resistance and I ruined the entire experience so if you can just completely surrender like and let go and just focus on relaxation and concentration just a slight form of concentration that's going to get you way way further and you can also do what's called the target technique where you can like literally choose a target in your house like say you say you're having or you're inducing an out of body experience in your bed but you want to astral project to your office so maybe i'd go to my office first before i did this technique and really feel what it feels like to sit in this area and look at the walls and feel things cuz then when i'm inducing sleep paralysis I'm going to imagine that I'm actually over here and my brain is going to get confused because it's going to feel like it was in the bed. But now it's like starting to really engage with my imagination because I, I set it up with all my senses first, if that makes sense. So I'm laying in bed as I'm relaxing, as I'm feeling these symptoms come, come on, I vividly imagine being somewhere else that my body is not physically at. And that's one of my easiest ways to have an out-of-body experience because then you're like your brain is like it's starting to get really real to your brain and now that what you're imagining is way more real to your brain than what you're actually experiencing so when it comes to vibration surrender like set your environment up beforehand let go of any outcome that you're experiencing and sink into relaxation and allow yourself to dip in and out of sleep if you have been dipping in and out of sleep and you come back to a little bit of that conscious awareness like that's enough space for you to use to get out of body. And again, I would practice like rolling out, like imagine rolling out, imagine standing at your desk. You want to use your visualization and sensation when you are in the vibrational state and you are using it to induce an out of body experience. But as far as sleep paralysis, the timing too is vital. So I would play around with your specific timing and see what works best for you. But that's kind of like the overall, I know that was a lot of info, but that's like the overall idea of how I induce it and what I'd recommend focusing on. Great, thank you. Great answer. Um, Lamar is, uh, is wondering, uh, is using a dream journal on my mobile? Uh, okay, will that make any difference? Uh, I literally can't write any of my not safe for work dreams where anyone can read them. Totally fine, my friend. So it's all down to preference. If it's easier for you to write in your phone, then I would definitely do that. For me, like I said, I like having like a library of dreams. And even though I still wouldn't want anyone to like read through my dream journal, I keep them in a nice little box, like this little area. And it's just like a little library of dream of, of my own mind for me. And you can still have that with your phone, right? Um, so it, it all just depends like what's most comfortable for you to write down. If you're using your phone like early in the morning, I don't know if you have like a blue light filter on your phone. Maybe you have some like blue light glasses. I got some like cool blue light glasses that I can use like um, when I'm staying up late or maybe I'm writing dreams early in the morning. That kind of just blocks out um, the blue light from technology that stimulates our brain and makes it harder for us to fall back asleep. Again, that's not necessary, but as long as you're recording your dreams, in some way and you can come back to them easily and kind of review them that's what's most important because it's not just about writing down our dreams but what's in our actual dreams is what we can use to see what's going on in our mind and it will help us get lucid so as long as you're writing them down that's that's a win so you can absolutely use your phone for sure
Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to unmute your mic. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Hey. Uh, yes, uh, I have a question. Uh, how to not get, at, uh, get attached to dreams? Like, uh, for example, uh, having uh, for my previous question, uh, previous question was like uh, having surreal dreams. Uh, sorry, surreal dreams. So the dreams uh, will be so much good than the uh, present reality that uh, later after waking up, uh, it feels like uh, again to go to sleep and later again having and that uh, thought process, the same uh, uh, dream uh, sometimes get continued and my entire day process uh, work and everything gets disturbed because I get attached entirely to the dream world. That reality is so much real and it feels so good. So how to avoid that? Yeah, so with lucid dreams, so there's a couple different aspects of it. We can, our, our dreams will start to blend with our waking life. Um, and it's hard to dis like uh, like associate what happened in waking life with our dreams, or maybe we're having so much more fun in our lucid dreams than we're having in waking life. So there could be two different kinds of like disassociation that we can f that we can experience within these states. Um, number one, as far as like being able to separate what's happening in waking life and your dreams, I would start to get very, very, very familiar with your dreaming territory. What's going on in your dreams? What emotions are coming up? What are you usually doing? Who are you usually with? Because there's a whole aspect of your dream realm and there's going to be things that repeat. And the more that you can really become familiar with what your dream world is doing, I literally feel like Alice in Wonderland sometimes because I see my dream world as a wonderland. I go to places that I have been to before. I meet up with people that I have met with before in my dreams and I start to get very familiar with what the dream world feels like. Now, I'm sure you guys have had like specific dreams where it's just like this this feeling, right? This energy, this vibe of like where you are at in your dream. Your overall dreaming mind, your dreamer is going to have some sort of energy attached to it. And I feel like bringing more awareness to what's going on in your dream is very important, but also creating more awareness of what's going on in your waking life. Because we want to br like lucid dreaming is also about lucid living is it is it is about seeing these both as aspects of us that we can marry together so like lucid dreaming isn't more important than waking life and waking life isn't more important than lucid dreams we experience these at the right times when we need to experience them and i truly believe that they are equal in a lot of ways and so i think it really comes down to more awareness of what's happening in waking life and what you do during the day and really starting to bring conscious awareness to things that maybe you wouldn't have been you know, brought conscious awareness to um, before. And then also getting very familiar with your, what's going on in your dreams. And really start to writing it, write it down. Like maybe once a week, you can write down the, the, consens the consensus of your dreams. Like lately, lately my dreams have had this type of energy. I've felt this emotion lately in my dreams, you know, and you can even use that to get lucid. But I think that it will help bringing more awareness to your waking life and your dream world, it will, it will kind of help um, make those lines a little bit more clear instead of just like the dream world blending with the uh, uh, waking reality. Because it's the same thing, believe it or not, when we don't get lucid. We don't get lucid because we don't practice maybe a lot of awareness in waking life, so we don't have a lot of awareness in the dream, so the lines are blurred, right? We don't realize that we, it was a dream until we woke up. So it's all about like creating that awareness in both states and that will help you lucid dream even more, but it'll also help you get familiar of like the energy of waking life and the energy of dreams, but also don't put lucid dreams on some sort of pedestal or anything um, above like waking life. Uh, I feel like lucid dreaming is the practice ground, right? And that's where all of our cheat codes are. And in waking life, that's where we put what we learned into practice. That's the playing field. So the lucid dreaming, the lucid dream realm is the practice field and the waking state is the playing field. So, and really notice like what you want to change specifically. Oh, I want to more, have more awareness in the dream about this. Or, oh, you start making specific intentions. And even if you fall asleep with a specific intention regarding what you want to experience in your dreams, even when it comes to 
you know, creating more of like a cohesive experience and then a cohesive, you can create these intentions and that will bring so much awareness into your experiences. And also, again, like you can work on that ang in the lucid dreams as well. So I definitely ask uh, about that and start to explore that. It's, it's like there's so many things that we can explore in all these different aspects. So I think it's really cool. And I appreciate you for sharing that. Um, that's a really, really great question. Um, I have a question as well. Yeah. It's in relation to um, neuroplasticity and lucid, dream, lucid dreaming. What do you think is the true, um, the true capacity of change we could do? Because I've heard, you know, you've had your, um, your, your gut issues healed overnight. And I've heard a couple mm -hmm. other stories as well. Where do you think is the limit when it comes to, you know, changing your neurochemistry? Do you think people can learn you know, new martial arts or um, practice. I don't know, it's just, where do you think is a limit? Do you think there is a limit? I love that question. about you know, psychedelic, psychedelic experiences inside lucid dreaming. But yeah, that's my question. Yeah, and I love that question because I don't know if there is a limit. Like, we've always seemed to have limits in waking life that other people were able to push past for example like the four minute mile it seemed impossible right for people to run the four minute mile like they said it could not be done until one person did it and then all of a sudden tons of people were running the four minute mile why is that it's because we set up our own limitations of what is possible and i don't really believe that like anything is impossible i just believe the word impossible is from people that haven't discovered how to do something yet, if that makes sense. It's like the word impossible is like coined by someone that was three feet away from gold. Like they said it was impossible because they didn't see it done previously and they couldn't do it themselves. So that's what's amazing about lucid dreaming is, and even consciousness in general, is we get to push the limits of what we thought was possible. I did not think that I was going to be able to heal my stomach and get off all eight medications from one lucid dream. That sounds too good to be true, right? Like that sound, that doesn't sound real. And that's why it's like, it's my mission to help push those like boundaries of what we actually thought were possible because we get to live the impossible, like, cause the impossible is what we define it as, you know? So really good question. I never will tell someone that like, oh, this is the limit with lucid dreaming because I like really don't know. And I want people to push the limits of what they thought was possible. This practice has blown my mind so many times. It has changed my life. I've witnessed it change other people's lives. And it's just like, I think it's just this magical place that we don't really understand. Consciousness in general is just a magical like place full of infinite possibilities that we don't understand how to use yet. So I think as far as your imagination can go I would just recommend like exploring that within the lucid dream because I feel like it's our duty as humans to show people what is actually possible through what we were given you know something that is our birthright and it's all about taking our power back and literally living a life full of like liberation and freedom so I'm like all for anything you guys want to try I really 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 do believe that I don't really think there are limits like and it's been shown scientifically too that anything that can be done with hypnotherapy can be done in lucid dreaming and that's just what's scientifically proven so far so as far as limits i'm not sure what they are but i i almost don't think that there are limits <laughs> unless we give them to ourselves yeah, thanks that was a nice answer of course so if you have time i have um another question yeah so the first one is, do you have any, you know, anecdotal, or do you have um, any, um, you know, do you have any experiences where other people have told them, I mean, told you, um, you know, changes they have had overnight through lucid dreaming, which kind of felt unreal, or kind of, how to explain it, which is kind of mind blowing that you can actually do that. Yeah, and what's cool is like, I'm starting to like hear more and more stories every time that just like blow my mind. Recently, I was celebrating with my one of my clients because he was addicted to nicotine for 15 years and he was actually able to go into the lucid dream and meet his brain and literally have a conversation with his brain, make a deal that if he took better care of his health and ate better, like because apparently his brain was like, oh, just telling him all this stuff that he needs to work on, like, your diet is trash and you're smoking cigarettes. Like something needs to be done basically. And he was like, okay, I'll work on my diet. I'll work on eating better. If you can just help me not crave cigarettes as much. And he made this deal with his, his brain. He's just like, okay, 
you know, fine. Um, he woke up and he didn't really have a craving to smoke. He told me, he's like, I was thinking about trying to smoke a cigarette just to see if I could test it, but I just decided to wait. Two weeks go past. He still has not smoked after 15 years of smoking. So he decides to go, his, his, the, his roommate that he was with smokes. So he was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to go smoke a cigarette to see if like, because this has tripped me out. Like, I smoked for 15 years. I woke up from this lucid dream, and two weeks later, I'm not having the craving to smoke. Let, let me test it out. He smoked a cigarette, didn't even finish all the way through it. It made him feel sick, and he literally hasn't smoked since. And I think it's been, like, eight weeks almost since he hasn't, like, smoked a cigarette. So that was one of the most recent um, stories that I have heard one of my clients talk about. And then I've had a client that was uh, fought in Iraq, and he had PTSD nightmares. I can't remember, I think it was like seven or eight years of like straight PTSD nightmares every night to the point where it was the same nightmare over and over and over every single night for like eight years. Imagine that. And just through lucid dreaming practice, we can totally switch something on in our mind because when we dream about a stressful situation and we're not lucid, our brain is like, oh, this is actually happening to me. So if your body, start, if you're like dreaming of like being in Iraq and like you're in like really hot sun or something, your physical body is going to start sweating because it thinks that's happening to you. But when you get lucid, you know, oh, I'm not in Iraq. I'm dreaming that I'm back in Iraq. And all of a sudden that switches something off in the brain that's associated with your nervous system because you know that you're safe. And after just two weeks of lucid dreaming practice, he has not had any more PTS nightmares. And again, he had them for like eight or nine years. So like what is possible with lucid dreaming and just consciousness exploration in general is so, so cool. And I'm so happy that people are just exploring with it and just like experimenting with it. Um, but those are some of my favorite ones. And then uh, a client two months ago had a really intense uh, skin condition that would cause rashes all over her body. She said she's had at least like a 70% decrease in these skin rashes just from doing lucid dream affirmation and pl placebo healing for, I think, three months. So it works. I think that it does take consistent practice. I don't recommend just trying to heal one thing and then like never doing it again. Like even with my stomach, I, I feel fine, but I will go into the lucid dream and I'll like redo the healing. Like I'll redo some affirmations and send some more of that like placebo healing to that center where I did need it. And I feel like with consistent practice as well, we can absolutely change our minds. We can absolutely change our health and really break down any limitations of what we thought was possible. So those are some of my favorite, like, recent uh, lucid dream experiences from my clients. Those are great stories. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, a question from uh, Jarvis. Uh, this is a weird question, but I often secrete saliva when I wake up at 4 a.m. and relax. Uh, is this a common problem? Uh, I think it is. Uh, so if so, <laughs> how can... I stop it. Like I keep thinking I have to swallow it or something. <laughs> yeah. And then you feel like you're going to choke. You're like, oh my God, this is like going to ruin my whole experience. I've been there. I think we've all kind of been there at one point or another. Um, and I've kind of figured it, figured out what works best for me anyways. So um, having like not a huge pillow has really helped me. Like I almost lay completely flat. There's like, I have like this little Tempur-Pedic pillow that's like <laughs> just this like little flat pillow and I'll lay on that and if I tilt my head like back like I notice it's not too big of a problem because it will kind of like <laughs> like go down on its own but one thing I've been doing it when it really starts to bother me like I induce almost all my out-of-body experiences on my back so I'll like get to the point where I'm about to have one and then I'll turn on my side and that's like my way of telling my brain okay I'm going to sleep now like I'm turning over but really I'm gonna still maintain the awareness and because my brain associates my side with sleep, I feel like I get into sleep paralysis much quicker. I wait till it's almost there and then I go on my side. I've noticed that when inducing those experiences on my side, like the saliva kind of like pools in your cheek. I have woke up <laughs> where I was like drooling a little bit. That's fine. Like that's just the price you, we got to pay if we're leaving our bodies at night, right? Not too bad. But um, laying on my side has definitely helped. But also the more you think about it, the worse it is going to get. Like I have noticed when it was like an actual problem, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to choke on it. Like something is going to happen. <laughs> what do I do? And I just remember something distracting me and like my hypnagogic imagery or something. And then I was like swallowing my saliva for like minutes without noticing or without 
a problem at all. So I think shifting the focus is like the biggest, most important part, but also making sure that you have the right pillow. And if it is hard to get into that state, I would try maybe going on your side, right? Like once the heaviness starts and the tingling, that's when I'll roll on my side. And then it's like sending that like signal to my brain. Okay, I'm going to sleep, but I'm like, I'm really not. I'm just like using that to get me there quicker. And then usually that takes care of like the saliva thing. So those are the few different things that have helped me with that. So yeah, I do think that is a common issue. I have one question. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. Uh, Jean, yeah. I was going to ask if you've ever had a, uh, and, and describe it if you, if you can, um, hyper-reality experiences and what that was like for you when you first experienced it. I, I remember certainly uh, the ones that I've had, but I'm kind of curious what you've had. Was that for Jean? Oh, no, sorry. Uh, that's for you, I think. Right, Vanquish? Yep. yep. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Oh, so like hyper-vivid reality experiences? Or what do you mean? Sorry. Yeah, like uh, um, those astral projection experiences that are far more real than, um, than mm. physical. I didn't want to assume that you had, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, I would like to know what you've, what you've experienced, what it was like. And, um, yeah. I, I, I like comparing experiences, so I think it'd be interesting to hear. Totally, yeah. And I've definitely had far more lucid dreams than I have had out-of-body experiences. But what I usually use my out-of-body experiences for are, like, connecting with my grandfather who's passed away, my dog that's passed away. I use it to, like, connect to loved ones or, like, entities that I feel are, like, close to me. Like, like when my house was, like, experiencing some sort of, like, weird paranormal activity, I went into the astral state to, like, see what I could find out. So that's kind of, like, usually what I use that experience for I do remember accessing I think it was like the Akashic Records or something I remember this one specific experience where it was almost like it's I got out of body and I was like in my room but it's like I I didn't have any like I didn't have any like movement it was like a camera view on the floor and I was like going in circles like I didn't have any control over my body but then I remembered getting like sucked into like this wormhole thing and I felt this like really weird feeling of like I don't even know how you'd explain it. I guess just like being vacuumed up like or something. I have literally no idea. But I accessed this realm of like, it was almost like this pillar. And there were like tons of different little stars. And every star that I went to had its own library of information from a specific time period or something. Almost like um, the Akashic Records. So most of my out-of-body experiences, they are like very grounding. They're usually with like my like I said, like my grandfather who's passed away or my uh, dog that I hang out with that's passed away or somewhere that I kind of can make sense of where I am, even if it feels like another planet, it's still like kind of familiar to me, you know, but I've only had a couple experiences where I've literally dreamt of being like, like th the one dream that I told you about with like um, going to the Akashic Records on tons of different stars. Like later in that experience, I became the ball of energy of these stars. Like I was going from library to library, learning about myself and the evolution of consciousness and earth and like these different time periods. And I don't know, like I can't retain a lot of like what I learned that information. But I remember there was this star at the end that I like now I didn't even have to like travel to or anything. It's almost like I was watching this happen. And I remember becoming that star and like feeling what it would feel like to just be like this ball of energy. Like um, someone talked about having an out of, out of body experience where they became like one single molecule. You know, like that's what it felt like. I was like embodying and it was like alchemy. I was like embodying this like other form of myself. Um, So that's one of like the the craziest i'd say like out of this world experiences that i've had and it was a while ago but most of my experiences i've noticed are like very like grounded in that way and i don't know if it's just because i'm like lucid dreaming so much and those feel like kind of grounded to me but um usually i don't have any of those like transcendental like crazy experiences unless i'm like intending to experience one or i like request one but that was shortly after my grandfather passed away is when i had access to these i just call them the akashic records i don't really know what it was but then i was like be being able to uh embody like inanimate objects or like other li living beings like a tree or a star it's like and it started z like zooming i know this sounds confusing but it's like i was zooming through experiencing all these different life forms as, as different forms of life if that makes sense so i had access to these akashic records and then i started to actually be able to experience 
those different things like in my body. So I was like learning about them and then I got to experience what it was like to be the energy of a star, like this tiny little microcosm in like Earth. Like it's so wild and it's so hard for me to even explain. I'll have to find that dream journal entry because I remember it was a big mess and I would love to actually dream or like look through that dream journal to see what that is about. But I'm glad you brought that to my attention because that has been a while and that that is an experience I still wonder like what what was even happening there. I, I definitely think I want to experience or explore that more too and see if that's actually a place that I can revisit because that's happened a couple times but yeah the Akashic record it's great you can actually do that in the lucid dream too Aang so maybe that would be something interesting to explore but yeah I definitely recommend exploring that in the out-of-body state because it felt much different than experiencing it in the lucid dream it's like in the lucid dream i was taken to the akashic records but in the out-of-body experience i was like a part of them the energy behind them like these it was and that's what i mean like these these states can relate to each other but they're like totally different experiences but i'll have to go back and look in that dream journal entry thank you for bringing that to my attention uh, i kind of forgot about that experience but most of them are spent like connecting with like entities or just like different archetypes within myself i don't know it's <laughs> what i've been doing lately is just that kind of work, ask a if that makes follow sense. up question on oxy uh, records can i ask a follow up question mm -hmm. uh i haven't uh, yet uh, experienced uh, out of body experience but uh, the first time i got to know about astral projection is uh, through oxy records only uh, some of my friends or I re uh, read on Reddit that how to uh, get to know our past experience. And that time I started researching on how to get to there. And I got to know about astral projection. But yet I want to know, like, is there a route or uh, you get to know there's a map to get uh, to the Akashic records? Oh, like a how map to the Akashic records? Like, uh, how do you uh, one get to know that they, uh, we have to get to the Akshik records? Like, one has to just uh, imagine that place and they'll get to there. Yeah, for me, I feel like it's also a, it's almost like a level of consciousness. Like, it's stepping outside of our consciousness, and we're tapping into the collective at that uh, at that point. If that makes sense. Like, to me, the Akashic records is like everything collectively that has ever happened to each individual soul, and everything that has happened inside of our experience and our reality. So, I, for me, this is why I love. Um, like exploring this in the lucid dream state, for example, because I can make a request to go there and it's almost like it's like shifting your state of consciousness or your state of being. So in the lucid dream, I am actually taken to a place. Like I make a request and the dream will change to answer my question. So I've, I've, I've literally had a lucid dream where I am brought to this huge library in the clouds, like what you kind of think an Akashic record is like. But then I've asked in another way in a lucid dream and tons of dream characters came to me representing different things within the akashic records and it, i just have to ask a question it was like spiritual google like i just <laughs> i like ask a question and like i would be given the answer so what i would practice doing is like maybe in waking life as well practice meditating and what you want to do it's almost like you're imagining leaving your body but first you want to ground yourself so uh, what i do is i i take a few deep breaths and i imagine like roots going into the earth into like the crystalline center of the earth and that keeps us grounded and rooted into our experience but then i see myself like kind of zooming above my physical body and basically you have to make a request to be open to receiving certain akashic records and i believe this is how a lot of people do past life regressions is by tuning out quieting down their conscious mind and being open to receive something greater than what they have lived or experienced in this waking life so i feel like it's all about intention it's all about like ev elevating your level of consciousness and awareness and intuition because we're gonna get ideas that we think that we either made up that aren't real or it actually might be something that we are recalling so working on intuition is really really powerful um with practicing accessing the akashic records individually and as far as lucid dreaming i would just have that expectation and intention because those are extremely important when creating a specific experience in the lucid dream and just call out directly to the sky and see what happens or if there's anything you maybe want to know about your specific records or maybe a past life experience like i'm very drawn to egypt and the egyptian pyramids like everything about egypt like triggers something in me like i my favorite 
shape is the triangle my absolute favorite number is the three and i'm like starting to see all these connections and so maybe that's something that i would go and ask in my lucid dream to explore why am i having this connection or where did i get this irrational fear it might be from something like before this physical lifetime right so um if you're practicing it in the waking state i would just practice that kind of like zooming out thing um reaching a very deep state and being open to receive something have a question in mind though um so, so a specific answer can come through or if you explore that in the lucid dream i would just have a specific command for accessing it and again like some sort of specific question because it is possible to just go there in the akashic records but sometimes there's so much information it can be overwhelming so if you're looking for something in particular that intention going into your experience will really really help you find kind of what you're looking for if that makes sense yes that do make sense thanks for the answer of course Okay, uh, let's see in text to voice if we have any questions. Um, okay, so from Lamar, when I'm in meditation, I get to a point where I'm falling in and out of sleep while aware, but I'm extremely uncomfortable in this stage. The roll over signals, or the rollover signals are strong, and I just submit to rolling over and sleeping. How long does this last? I feel like I might not fall asleep if I keep this up. So I would try this. Like you can try this at any point in time. I feel like if you try this as you're going to bed, the rollover signal, like all of those uncomfortable symptoms, are going to last for longer. But maybe if you wake yourself up in your REM sleep, so you don't have to go through like light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep, just wake yourself up when you're most likely in REM. And then I would try doing this. And with, with the rollover signal for me, it's, it usually lasts maybe anywhere from like two minutes to like, it could be like 15 minutes sometimes. But what's most important is not investing in those sensations. We have to realize that they are sensations and that's all that they are. And they do not have power unless we mentally invest in them. So for example, like it, um, one of the practices within Buddhism is like, becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable like if you have like an itch on your face or something in meditation you can become aware of the sensation that your body is having a specific interesting sensation right here and you don't have to engage with it you can notice the sensation and you can welcome it but you don't want to try to completely like get rid of it if that makes sense and this will help it pass a lot lot easier so if we're practicing like passing the rollover signal what i would do in waking life is if you are meditating and you do have an itch or you do feel uncomfortable see if you can shift your focus become aware of it and then shift your focus to something else and forget about it and the reason why i tell people to do this um is because it really helps us with the rollover signal it helps us really get comfortable with noticing certain symptoms or things but not actually investing in them and letting them ruin our technique if that makes sense for for me again like two to 15 minutes i'd say maximum is when the rollover signal is kind of like present then after that it kind of passes on its own <clears throat> but the more we're thinking about it the worse it's going to be because now like attention is going where our energy is flowing and so now since all the intention or the attention is on the rollover signal or these uncomfortable situations, it's going to feel like they're lasting a lifetime. So what's helped with me, even in meditation, like when you are not able to concentrate, if you are aware that you aren't able to concentrate, you are meditating. So become aware that you are experiencing those sensations, but have something to kind of distract your mind, if that makes sense. Um, and it's all about getting used to those sensation because if we always feel those and we can't help but like itch or we can't help but roll over we're we're training our brain to instantly give into those signals so i think just some mental practice in waking life as well like when you're meditating will kind of help you get past that, that stage plus if you wake up in rem instead of doing this like at the beginning of the night when you're going to sleep it won't last as long because you'll already be in rem anyways you're going to go through a quick uh quick period of hypnagogic imagery maybe two minutes or so of the rollover symptoms and then i find that it usually passes so the stage of sleep that you're practicing this i would aim for like four and a half to six hours after sleep and then just practicing by doing this in meditation if you have like an itch or something just becoming aware of it and seeing if you can make it pass just through thought alone so i hope that answers your question
Okay. I'm gonna heal my whole body and or incorporate all my shadows tonight. Yes, Nick. <laughs> that sounds great. Okay, I think we have a question here from Paradise. Uh, are you able to learn things while lucid dreaming? Like, for example, if there's something that can benefit you and you're trying to learn it, but there's no way to learn it normally. So maybe lucid dreaming can uh, help you learn how to do it from the source and know how to do it subconsciously when you're awake or actually know it consciously. Uh, I wanted to actually project for this reason so I know so I can get both answers and learn some things that I've been trying to learn. But I don't know if lucid dreaming would be different than astral projection for learning things instead of just getting answers. I love this question because this is one of the main things that I talk about. Like if you're a part of my channel or we work together or anything, it's like we're getting lucid, right? But what can we do once we are lucid? And what's cool about the lucid dream state is to your brain, it is real. Like your brain does not think you're lucid dreaming. It thinks that you're awake. So we can actually learn seven to nine times quicker than when than we would if we were just practicing in the waking state. There's actually a UK so sports science study on this where they had athletes run, uh, do squats and lift weights in the lucid dream for like 60 days. And after the 60 day period, like 81.3% of those athletes increased in speed, accuracy and muscle mass just from lucid dream practice. You can practice parkour in your dreams if you want to get better at parkour and you don't have anywhere to practice in waking life i practice dream or i practiced driving in my lucid dreams almost all of my driving was actually done in the lucid dream state because i felt safe it was up to me i wasn't just like going in a car in the middle of the street in waking life and trying to drive like i was able to manifest any scenario that i wanted to get better at driving. And that way I felt so much more comfortable with it when I woke up because I was actually spending my my nights driving. And to my brain, that was real. I'm a painter, so I use the lucid dream state to practice painting, to get ideas. I practice some yoga poses in my dream. Like I'm working on this like handstand thing. <laughs> I'm actually practicing in my lucid dream. And I feel like it's really helped me in waking life. Even if you look at the best inventions, they were ever created. I wish I could find that post that I did because I literally have, I made this post of like the 10 best inventions that came from a, a dream or a lucid dream. And so it really shows us that, that that's where we're able to tap into our untapped potential, like our infinite potential. You know, our, our brain, our subconscious mind runs 95% of our brain. We're operating with our conscious mind with only 5%. So imagine what we can actually accomplish if we use lucid dream to practice. I know people using it to study for tests, or if you're trying to get over a specific fear, you can actually interact with that fear in your lucid dream. And that's called exposure therapy. In therapy, it's where you interact with something that scares you, but your brain cannot stay in a consistent state of anxiety. So you actually reprogram your brain to be okay with whatever that was that you were scared of over time. And we can actually use the lucid dream state for that as well. So whether you want to practice public speaking, whether there's an instrument you want to practice, whether you're trying to like practice martial arts or something within your dream, whether you want to get business ideas or you want to literally anything. If you want to get better at cooking, you could literally practice that in your lucid dream. So for me, it's one of the most efficient ways that I practice new things and I get new ideas. So I would absolutely, anything that you want to practice in waking or master in waking life, I would absolutely practice that in the lucid dream state for sure. Hello? Hello? Hey. Uh, this is my last question mostly, but as uh, most of the examples uh, you have given are kind of uh, physical experience, like uh, someone wants to learn uh, some physical exercise or something or other. My question is, uh, my first goal is to be not judgmental and then be mindful. Uh, can I do this through the lucid dream? Can I re-repair my mind and make myself, because I'm on a, a, a few months of meditation continuous, but yet uh, there is a noise in my, inside my mind. And I'm uh, feeling that I'm not able to improve it. So can I do it as it's not a physical thing? It's inside my mind. You can absolutely do it. And in Tibetan Buddhism, they within dream yoga, they practice kindness. 
in the lucid dream because they say that kindness is the most powerful form of spiritual awakening. If we can be kind to others, if we can be kind to ourselves, then we can live in a much kinder world. And so you can totally practice things that aren't physical, which is super, super amazing. All you have to do too is act out those things within your dreams, which is so cool because your brain thinks that it's actually happening in the lucid dream. So if you want to practice kindness, how would you practice kindness towards others and especially towards yourself? What are the words you would use? What are the actions that you would take? And you can literally use your lucid dream as a practice playground to implement these changes that you actually want to bring to the waking state. And dream yoga is amazing for spiritual practice within the lucid dream state. It doesn't just have to be something physical that we practice. It could be something emotional. It could be something ener energetic, like mental. Like we can absolutely take any aspect of ourselves that we want to build on and explore that in the lucid dream. So I love that you mentioned that because it's not just about, yeah, the physical things that we can practice in the lucid dream, even though that Thanks opens up answer. so much, but. Yeah, completely. Uh, like um, It's overwhelming uh, because uh, right now, I'm so much happy because I understood, like, for example, uh, in lucid dreaming, I have to meet and uh, to new people and I have to behave or uh, whatever uh, the thoughts are being mindful. I have to be mindful with the people in my lucid dream and that will train me in my real life. Yes, I understood that. Thanks for the answer. Oh, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. And I think that's really important for for um, other people to hear it as well, because it can literally, like, whatever way we want to transform or shift, it doesn't just have to be something physical. It could be that you're just trying to be more brave. It could be that you're just trying to have more courage and not be so anxious when new experiences come your way. You know, it could be something like that. And we can absolutely practice building these things in the dream. And this is my favorite, because, like, we sleep for a third of our lives, guys, which is roughly 30 to 33 years asleep. What if you got a third of your life back? to practice things, to practice skills, to literally learn about yourself and the world that you live in and how to operate and how to manifest things and how to physically, mentally, and emotionally heal yourself. Like, what would you do with one third of your life back? So I love that you brought that up because it is literally an endless playground for everything um, that we can possibly experience in waking life. And that's why I'm still so, so hyped about it because there's just so much um, that we can explore in this state. And it is 6 for me, 6 p.m. for me, and I do have something in 20 minutes. So I think that that is going to wrap it up for today. But I just want to say thank you to everybody who has shown up. Gene, thank you as well for being here. It's been so fun to chat with all of you guys, yeah, and I definitely hope you. to do it again in the future. Yeah, yeah you, of course. you gave some really, really uh, good answers there. So I'm sure everyone benefited from that. Thank <laughs> you. Um, uh, I think Thank that was our, one of our longest uh, Q and A's as well. Almost uh, three hours. I've got on my clock. Oh, look at that! <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Um, and yeah, if you haven't subscribed as well to the channel, go ahead. I'm sure you'll be making a lot more interesting videos there too. And if you know, you're always welcome back here if you'd like to do a Q and A as well in the future. Thank you so much. I just want to yeah, let you guys know if you are interested in like checking out the videos that I do, you can find me on YouTube at The Lucid Mystic. Um, I also offer like one on one mentorships, uh, online courses. And on May 5th, I am running a live course on Facebook, actually in a private Facebook group for intro to dreaming. So if you're still new on like, I know a lot of you are already like inducing these amazing experiences. But maybe if you know someone who is working on their dream recall or decoding their dreams or starting to use what's in their dream journal to get lucid i'm running a workshop on that if you guys have any questions about any way anything that i'm doing or what i'm up to you can just email me at contact.thelucidmystic at gmail or just hit me up uh somewhere on my youtube channel and i will be there but so good to chat with you guys again thank you gene so much this has been so fun to connect with you guys and i definitely hope to connect with you all again and again Thank you guys for having me today. It's been great. Okay, great. Thank you. Of course. Bye. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Of course. Goodbye. Bye.